In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, Come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. In, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary and Louisa. In, with, and for all that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come reign on earth. Fiat. The kingdom of my divine will, in the midst of creatures, Book of Heaven, Volume 34, Part 2. January 5th, 1936. One who lives in the divine will forms the little life of the divine will in the creature. How she is loved with new and doubled love by God. My little and poor will feels the extreme need of the divine volition. Without it, I feel I am on an empty stomach, without strength, without warmth, and without life. Even more, I feel death at each instant, because if I am deprived of it, there is no one who can take its place in nourishing its life in me. Therefore I keep repeating, I am hungry. Come, O divine will, to give me your life, to satiate me of you. Otherwise I will die. But while I was raving, for I wanted to feel in me the fullness of the divine will, my sweet Jesus, Repeating his short little visit, all goodness told me, My blessed daughter, your raving, your hunger, feeling the extreme need to feel in each instant the life of my will, are wounds to my heart, are tearings of love, that using violence on me, make me run, fly to come to you, and make the life of my will grow in you. You must know that as the creature wants to do my will, in order to live and emit her acts in it, she calls her creator, who feels called by the power of his own volition in the creature, in the face of which he cannot resist, or even just slightly hesitate. On the contrary, since we never let ourselves be surpassed in love, as soon as we see that she is about to call us, we give her no time, 
but we ourselves call her. And she runs into our divine being, as into her own center. She flings herself into our arms, and we clasp her so tightly as to transform her into ourselves. A perfect accord takes place between creator and creature, and our emphasis of love is so great that we love her with new and doubled love. But this is not enough. We give her such communication of our supreme being as to make ourselves loved by her with new and doubled love. And if you knew what it means to be loved by God with new and doubled love, and to be able to love him with new and doubled love, only in our divine will there are these wonders and prodigies. God loves himself in the creature. Everything is his. Therefore it is no wonder that he puts in the field his love ever new. He doubles it. He multiplies it a hundredfold, as much as he wants. And he gives her the grace to love him with his own love. If it were not so, one would see great disparity between one who can love and one who cannot love. And the poor creature would remain as lowly, annihilated, without enthusiasm and union of love with her creator. And when two beings cannot love each other with equal love, the inequality already produces unhappiness. While our will is unity, and it freely gives its love to the creature in order to be loved, it gives its sanctity in order to make her holy its wisdom in order to make itself known. There is nothing it possesses that it would not want to give to her. More so, since by her living in our fiat, as she has put her will aside in order to give life to ours in her acts, she has formed the little life of our volition within her, which claims and longs for its growth. And one more act in it is enough to make it grow. A sigh to be satiated, a total desire for my will to run in all of her being, is enough to form sufficient food for her to feel completely satiated of what belongs to her creator. It takes highest attention, and my will shall do everything that is needed in order to form its life in the creature. Fiat January 22nd, 1936 One who lives in the divine will forms the theater of the works of her creator, and repeats within herself the moving scene of redemption. I was doing my round in the acts of the divine will, and I was trying to invest with my little love the heavens, the sun, and all creation. And the divine fiat to requite me formed the place in my will in which to enclose the heavens and all creation. Then I went round in the acts of redemption, and sweet Jesus enclosed his acts in me, and repeated the most moving scenes to repay me of my little love. I remained surprised, and my beloved Jesus, all tenderness and love, told me, My good daughter, daughter of my will, you must know that my love is so great that in order to pour it out, 
I want to repeat my works. But in whom can I repeat them? In whom can I find the place to enclose them, to feel myself being loved? In one who lives in my will. As the creature goes around in my works, in order to know them, love them, and call them into herself, they are reproduced in her, and she forms the theater of our works. How many moving scenes? Now are the heavens stretched out. Now the sun rises with all its majesty. Now the sea murmurs, and as it forms its waves, she would want to inundate her creator with her love. And now she forms the most beautiful flowery field, and in each flower she makes them say to us her refrain, I love you, I glorify you, I adore you, and may your fiat come to reign upon the earth. There is not one being which she does not call into herself to make them say to us her sing-song, I love you, I love you. My daughter, our love is not content if it does not give itself completely and does not repeat our works in one who lives in our will. But this is not all. Keep listening. If by going around in the acts of creation, she repeats my works, and I take highest pleasure and delight in assisting at the most splendid scenes of creation within the creature, when she goes around in the acts of redemption in order to make them her own, then I repeat my life. So I repeat my conception, my birth, at which the angels repeat the glory in the highest and peace to people of goodwill. And if human ingratitude forces me to cry, I go and cry within her, because I know that my tears will be requited and pearled with her I love you. And so I move on, repeating my life, my steps, my lessons. And when the sins renew my pains, my crucifixion, my death, I never suffer it outside of this creature, but I go into her to suffer my pains, my cross, my death, because she will not leave me alone. She will take part in my pains. She will remain crucified with me and will give me her life as the requital for my death. Hence, in one who lives in my will, I find the theater of my life, the moving scenes of my childhood and of my passion. I find speaking heavens, suns that love me, winds that moan with love for me. In sum, all created things have a little word to say to me, and I love you, an attestation of gratitude. But who is it that renders them speaking to me? Who is it that feeds all things with a voice? One who lives in my will. My will transforms her so much that there is no love it does not make her give to it, nor works it cannot repeat in her. Therefore, these souls can be called its living lives and the repeaters of the works of their creator. Fiat
March 1, 1936. Prodigies of the Incarnation of the Divine Word. How the heavens were stupefied and the angels remained mute. Prodigies when the divine will operates in the creature. The Divine Trinity called into council. How God, in creating us, places a dose of his love in the creature. I am under the press of the privation of my sweet Jesus. I feel squeezed, undone, as if my life wanted to end. But the divine volition, triumphant over my little being, rises within my soul and calls me to live my day in its will. It seems to me that while I feel myself dying without dying, the divine will forms its victory, and this is its triumph, and its life rises again over my dying human will. More beautiful, all full of majesty, and of doubled love. Oh, divine will, how much you love me. You make me feel death so as to centralize more your life in me. So I continued my day within its divine acts, and as I arrived at the incarnation of the word, such love could be felt as to feel oneself burning, being consumed in its divine flames. And my highest good Jesus, as though drowned within his flames of love, told me, My blessed daughter, my love in incarnating myself in the womb of my celestial mother was so great that heaven and earth could not contain it. The act of incarnating myself took place in an act of love so intense, so strong, so great, has to be more than enough to burn up everyone and everything with love. You must know that before incarnating myself, my celestial father looked into himself and in the ardor of his love, unable to contain it, he poured out of himself torrents and seas of love. In this ardor of love, he looked at his son, and I was there, in the same flames of love, and he commanded me to incarnate myself. I wanted it so, and in a surge of love, without leaving my father nor the Holy Spirit, the great portent of the incarnation took place. I remained with my father, and at the same time, I descended into the womb of my mother. We, the three divine persons, were inseparable, nor subject to separating. Therefore I can say, I remained in heaven, and I descended upon earth, and the Father and the Holy Spirit descended with me upon earth, and remained in heaven. Hence, in this act so great, our divine being overflowed so much with love, that the heavens were stupefied, and the angels remained astounded and mute, all enwrapped with our flames of love. The Incarnation was none other than an act of our divine will. What can it not do, or is it not able to do? Everything. With its power and infinite love, it reaches the point of operating the prodigy never heard or done before, of making us remain in heaven and descend into the prison of the maternal womb. So did our will want, and so it did. 
Now, my daughter, each time the soul wants to do my will, my celestial father looks inside of himself first. He calls the sacrosanct trinity as though into counsel in order to fill that act of our will with all possible and imaginable goods. Then he unleashes it from himself and has the creature invested with his operating, communicating, transforming will. And just as in the incarnation, the three divine persons remained in heaven and descended into the womb of the Immaculate Virgin, in the same way, my will, with its power, transports with itself, within its operative act, the divine trinity into the creature, while leaving it in heaven, and forms its divine act in the human will. Now who can tell you the wonders that are enclosed in this act of our will? Our love rises and diffuses so much as to find no place where to put itself. And when it has filled everything, it withdraws into our source. Our sanctity feels honored with a divine act by our very will operating in the creature, and it spreads with surprising grace in order to communicate its sanctity to all creatures. These are unspeakable prodigies which it performs when the creature calls it to operate in her. Therefore, let everything disappear in my will, and we will give you everything in your power, and you will be able to give us everything, even ourselves. After this, I felt my little intelligence so filled with divine will that I was unable to contain it, and I continued my round in its divine acts. And as I reached the act in which the Immaculate Queen was conceived, I comprehended how the Supreme Being, before calling her to life, poured so much love into her that as soon as she felt the life, she felt the need to love her Creator. She felt inside of herself that love which she expressed outside. I remained surprised, and my beloved Jesus added, My daughter, do not be marveled. It is our usual way, when we deliver each creature to daylight, in the act of creating her, to give her a dose of love therefore giving her part of our divine substance. And according to our designs that we make upon her, so do we increase the dose of our love. So each creature possesses within herself the particle of the substance of divine love. Otherwise, how could she love us if we ourselves did not put something of our own in order to make ourselves loved? It would be like asking for something she would not possess. We already know that the creature has nothing of her own, and this is why we must enclose in her, as though in a aquarium, our love, our will, to ask her to love us and to do our will. And if we ask, it is because we know that she has our love, and our will in her power, which we ourselves have placed in the depth of her soul. Now, if she loves us, this dose of our love rises, it increases, and she feels more powerfully the need to love us and to live of the will of her Creator. If she does not love us, it does not grow, and the human weaknesses, the passions, will form the ash over our love, 
in such a way that she reaches the point of feeling no need to love us at all. Ash has covered and suffocated our divine fire, and while the fire exists, she does not feel it. On the other hand, every time she loves us, she does nothing other than blow her breath in order to dispel the ash, and in this way she shall feel the living fire that burns within her bosom and shall increase it so much as to be unable to live without loving us. Now, my daughter, the Immaculate Queen, from the very first instant of her conception, because she felt within herself the love for her Creator, and our will operating more than her own life, she loved us so much that she did not lose an instant without loving us. And by loving us, and loving us again, she increased so much this dose of love as to be able to love us for all, and give love to all, and to love everyone always, without ever ceasing. You must know that our love is so great that by placing this dose of love within the creature, we placed the seed of happiness within her, because true happiness must hold its royal place inside the soul. The happiness from outside, if it does not reside within, cannot be called true happiness. On the contrary, it embitters the poor creature, and it is like a mighty wind that quickly disperses it leaving only traces of it, converted into thorns that embitter her. Not so with the happiness from inside, placed by us. It is lasting, and it always grows. And besides, to love is to become happy, and to make us happy. One who does not love can never be happy. One who does not love has no purpose, nor any interest in doing any work. Nor does he feel the heroism to do good to anyone. The sacrifice that confers the most beautiful tints to love does not exist for him. So the Most Holy Virgin possessed the Sea of Happiness because she possessed as many lives of love for as many existing creatures. Not only this, but by never doing her will, but always mine, she formed as many lives of my divine will within her in such a way that she can give a life of love and a life of divine will to each creature. And this is why, by right, she is queen of love and queen of the supreme will. Therefore, the sovereign queen loves and longs to deliver these lives in order to deposit them inside the creatures and form the kingdom of pure love and the kingdom of our will. And in this way, she will reach the highest point in loving her creator and the highest point in loving and doing good to creatures. Fiat You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 34, Part 2. Fiat Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. 
Have pity on me, and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.